Well, it's Thursday. Thomas Miller here on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Glad you're on board. We have a moon that has already moved into Leo this morning. We talked about that yesterday, had that long void, of course, last evening into this morning. 2.30 this morning is when it began, so the next couple of days you get to peacock around and uh, (laughs) put yourself out there. Feel the rays of the sun. Feel the exuberance of you and who you are. You have the moon's energy with you. Now, we've mentioned this is a light week. We have one other aspect today. I mentioned it yesterday, but before we talk about it, I want you to hear this. Hi, Thomas. Uh, Sylvia from New York. Real quick recording here. Chiron is very powerful. It teaches us self-love, self-forgiveness, self-inclusion. It's very prominent in my chart. I was born in 77 in the year that Chiron was found. And on the Chiron conjunctions, it is very, very powerful for me. I was born in Greece. And uh, I understand astrology, especially the, the language of astrology, because of uh, I my native a language is Greek. And I just wanted to say there is a Chiron cave in Greece and there's an actual location of Chiron was believed to have lived and his teachings reverberate and people go there and do ritual, my friends. So Chiron as a teacher and as a healer is very real. And I love your work and I hear your podcast every day. Much love. And Viva Chiron. Sylvia, (laughs) you lit up my morning with that. Thank you so much. What a great message. I'm going to call up Robert Glasscock and say, Viva Chiron! (laughs) Straight from Greece, from the cave. Well, we'll get the old guy. You know, when you get old, you, you just get set in your ways. I get it. He's been doing it without Chiron for a long time. I like Chiron, and I agree with Sylvia. The Chiron return at age 50 is something that you should anticipate if you are not there yet and probably reflect back on like I do and Sylvia does and say, wow, that was powerful. That was formative, a significant period in my life. You know, this whole tapestry of us coming into this life, bringing things with us, giving ourselves the opportunity to grow in a soul-based perspective. Go back to Pierre Tillhart de Chardin. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. You know, I think of a really talented coach here, coaching a team of some sort, whatever the sport de jour is. They get on the field, and he realizes this opposing team is formidable. They are going to really stretch us. We might not have come prepared. We're a little bit off our game after the first quarter. But this coach is brilliant and knows how to adjust and knows how to think on his or her feet and draws back, redrafts the game plan right there during the middle of the game, finds his team's strength and the opposing team's weakness, capitalizes on that, communicates the new plan to the team, executes brilliantly, and they win the game. It's kind of what we're dealing with here. We brought stuff in. We set ourselves up to deal with it. Our human flesh team says, wow, this is a lot more uh, difficult than we thought it was going to be. And yet our spiritual coach, of which one of the coaches is certainly that astrological chart, mapping out the plays as we go then it's our job to listen to the coach, to follow the game plan, and to execute as brilliantly as possible. Jesus told a parable. In fact, it was about investing money. It was in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, I'm just looking up here. And the one who invested the money well and brought back a return, the master said, Well done, you good and faithful servant. The idea is when we all go to heaven, we want God to say, Well done good and faithful servant. You did a good job with the life that you were given. With this new perspective for me of astrology, you would think that at the end of your life, as you reflect back in those last moments, if you have the cognition to do so, that you think about that you lived your chart. You did everything that the map said to do, and you did it to the best job possible. Yeah, that to me is the job of Chiron. Well, today at 9.35 this morning, 
Mars in Cancer squares Chiron in Aries. And you know as that square is going on that Mars is looking over there saying, I want to be where you are. (laughs) I want to go home. (laughs) Mars, go home. Well, it brings a little tension to the mix today. Robert and I recorded some Old Soul, New Soul podcasts day before yesterday. And one of the areas we talked about, square aspects, bring welcome tension. There's the sports team analogy again. It brings that tension of a difficult challenge. This opponent is tough. We have to overcome. It stretches us. So there you go. Today, a little bit of Chiron stretching, as we say. Viva Chiron! <laughs> Sylvia, thank you. You made this You made this special for us. And we all took away a good message, too. See you back tomorrow. I've got another listener question. If you'd like to leave me one, go to the funastrology.com website up at the top and drop it in there.